Okay. So uh, today we will, we would like you to comment on the, uh, the, uh, on your points of view as an artist, as a curator, on these intersections with art, science, and technology, and the idea of of how uh, nowadays we are in this uh, in this moment when we have all all that has been happening during all the uh, the previous century the avant-garde the neo-avant-garde these uh, two different points of view of the artists uh, in the first part of the of the 20th century which were looking for a more um, more of a utopia in artists, and then what happened after postmo uh, after postmodernism with this idea of a uh, dystopia. How do you understand your work, Jan Robert, uh, in this context? What do you do with materiality? How do you work with technology? What is the relationship uh, between your aesthetic and philosophical idea of, uh, of your work and the, the link with technology and post-internet. Uh, can you start with that question? Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a big one. Um, well, shortly I've been uh, accused of flirting with uh, modernism uh, quite a lot, so I do have a, uh, a sort of intermediate uh, relationship with both uh, phenomena you just mentioned. Um, so, sort of in opposition to sort of a movement of the early 90s net artists who very much were embedded in this anti institutional postmodern way of working, um, I started embracing aestheticism and a sort of formal relations with, with modernist work. Um, yeah, for two reasons, to get a grip on the materiality of this internet um, and to relate it back to an art historical uh, discourse. Um, and in another way, also somehow to emancipate it somehow. Because I was also, I grew up in a time when, when fine art and media art were a big separate two fields, um, even quite hostile to each other. Uh, and you were either in one or in the other. So a lot of uh, anybody sort of working with digital arts was sort of classified as media art. Um, and that is, that, is, that is coming together now. So you see a lot of, um, uh, it's a lot of, yeah, merging going on right now, but it's, it's like taken 25 years. Um, so it was also a way to sort of bridge the gap to the fine art discord to sort of relate it to art historical uh, tropes or methods or what you want to say. So there's two ways to, for me to, to work with it, so to embrace the materiality and to sort of reach out to, to a discourse. And Monica, would you like to comment something uh, in, in, in that sense? Uh, okay, um, well, I, I see myself as a curator facilitator, so I'm not theoretical, I'm not um, focusing on the development of a discourse, but rather um, providing the context for artists to uh, grow uh, and to nurture new ideas in, in the research. And this is what um, I do and I um, and I elaborate while um, I'm here at CERM. Uh, in the sense of the uh, materiality discourse, uh, I see that the, obviously there is this uh, emergence to, to respond to, uh, to the idea that the, uh, the physical world is uh, something to explore. We see here at CERN a great potentiality of that, uh, especially because, uh, well, matter is the, the focus of the research in particle physics, even when uh, it's quite un intangible. Uh, we cannot see it, we cannot reach it, but we uh, uh, and, uh, we try to, to to go deeper into this micro scale to understand the properties and the nature of matter. In parallel, um, our technologies, the engineers at CERN are really 
focus and immersing a huge research effort to discover new materials that help uh, us to 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 obtain uh, higher amounts of energy and matter. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, CERN is a, an amazing context, either theoretical or uh, technically, for any artist, uh, artist who is uh, approaching this, uh, this framework uh, in their discourse. So, yeah, that from my side. <laughs> And uh, Jan, you were talking about uh, this division uh, when you were growing up between fine arts and media arts. And right now the situation is really uh, very different. Uh, I would like to ask you both, what do you think about the reception of a uh, of this kind of hybrid uh, compound art that mixes technology or that mixes science and, and art. Uh, from the point of view of you as a creator, Jan Robert, what do you think of this reception of your work nowadays? Uh, I know that you have been uh, presenting your, your work more and more often in art festivals, in different uh, galleries, so it has been very well received and uh, for you, Monica, in your line of work as a curator, what do you think of the reception of these hybrid uh, works, of these hybrid exhibitions, which uh, also uh, need a lot of infrastructure from, uh, from institutions, from galleries, from museums? So, Jan Robert, if you, if you would like to start. Ah, um, I had a little bad reception, but I think I sort of, uh, you were referring to sort of the, the emerging focus on technology-based art in, in the institutions and galleries? Is that the, and how, what the impact of that is? Yes, is exactly. Sort of how, it, how it is received uh, by the publics, by the curators, by the museums, by the galleries. Uh, what do you think of the reception of this kind of hybrid art? Pooh, um, yeah, it seems like a, a is it, it's like a general emancipation of, 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 of technology. But I mean, technology and art go away so, together so long, as you said. It's only that digital technology, in my case, has had a really long, long path to be accepted. I mean, there was recently this show in the Whitechapel, which was celebrating 50 years of it. And it seems like it took 50 years for it really to sort of land. Again, that is, of course, yeah, that is a sort of, that's just observing what's happening. It's, it's, it's quite remarkable. And, of course, the Internet's been, been structural in that. I have to uh, come back at Monica to, to, to sort of, again, um, respect CERN, of course, after creating the web, but also it's just as CERN is popping up materiality every day. Uh, well, not every day, I wish that was happening. But uh, so is the internet for me is, is creating a whole field of new materials continuously. So um, in, in that sense, there's a lot of, uh, it's a very interesting um, field of discovery. Um, but how the position right now is, um, it's just a slowly, again, a slowly emancipation. You can see it sort of, sifting in, it's coming through the curators and it, it's hitting the institutions, the galleries are embracing and the collectors are used to getting used to it. it it's a matter of often it really simple, uh, simple stuff. Of course, it's, it's understanding the way of thinking behind these more complex materialities. And then it's usually a very pragmatic thing about how to conserve the stuff. So you get this discussion a lot, sort of, uh, so, so now what do we do with this stuff? But that is actually maturing quite a lot right now. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Okay, my side. Uh, uh, okay, there are many angles to take this hybrid uh, nature of uh, contemporary artwork. Um, one of them is to, to think of art as research, which um, brought many discussions in the past and still is very relevant. I think the researcher, uh, the artist as researcher, uh, is uh, it's a way to approach this uh, hybrid and uh, cross-disciplinary 
uh, property of the of art today, and uh, and I don't think is only related to the medium that is the science and or the technology uh, artifact, but also about um, understanding a more complex uh, ecosystem in which uh, art. Uh, uh, is uh, engaging with uh, much more relevant issues in our uh, uh, in our world, and uh, and I think I think hybrid uh, works in that sense in this in this attitude to understand the challenges of our era and how everything is uh, trans in a way and. Uh, and uh, even there is no disciplines, some efforts were put in the, well, recently in calling non-discipline uh, environments for research. And, um, and how the gallery and the audience uh, welcomes or engage with these ideas is sometimes uh, marginal, but in a way, as I think uh, we can see it more often uh, than ever before. 15 years ago, I was working with uh, what is called bio-artists, uh, artists in, involved in uh, exposing the, the fallacies of the biotechnologies and how these technologies were uh, um, explained to the public. And artists uh, uh, right now, these artists, these bio artists, are more um, uh, are represent, uh, being represented in many galleries, from MoMA to, uh, to to many of the major venues you know, of contemporary art uh, um, in many countries, from Japan to India to Europe and Mexico, they, you have a very vibrant uh, community of researchers in that sense. So I think it's perhaps marginal in, in places that are really uh, rigid uh, in the way they understand art but it's very open for this question in many other environments. So, um, yes, yes, this is, this is how I feel it. Um. Uh, Monica, Jan, uh, during the first table, one of the participants, Tania Edo, was talking about um, one of the symptoms of this um, understanding of uh, the limits and the non-limits between art and science and technology and these uh, uses and misuses uh, in different practices. And she was talking about the, the notion of sharing, of uh, searching for a common good or a common questions uh, between the different agents involved in these practices, uh, women with these artists and scientists, but, uh, but art artists and researchers, uh, researchers um, institutions, of course, uh, curators, uh, museums, etc. What do you think about, uh, especially Monica, in the, in the work you, you are doing in this center, in CERN, what do you think about this searching about the common ground, the common ground of questions and the, the common ground of concernings in this uh, contemporary world? Um. Should, should I start? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's for me. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, th I think there are, again, different angles. And in, at CERN, we, we, we are an interesting model because uh, we uh, invite artists and, um, to, to come inside science. So here, there is a community uh, every day. Uh, and there is 3,000, around 3,000 scientists coming together, and, uh, and plus the, the, the international community, which is 12,000 scientists, so it's a huge space dedicated to just a, uh, a single objective, which is to, to push the boundaries of knowledge and how we understand the universe. So this is a big, big uh, issue and a very complex uh, 
uh, area of research for the scientific uh, scientific from the scientific perspective. So how an artist come here and uh, try to share and to to to, to explore commonalities uh, is quite it's a big deal, really. So. Um, I understand uh, why I see the artists uh, uh, doing their activity here, that they are trying very hard uh, to understand what particle physics is and what uh, the scientists are trying to do. So it's a massive um, learning process. And while they do that, uh, they try to, and we encourage uh, the, uh, them to, to, to find a common uh, lexicon and a uh, way to dialogue and to share and exchange ideas. Um, the exchange of ideas is only done, uh, achieved by understanding that uh, creativity is very important here and that you need to always look for the simple idea to come up with uh, into the most complex idea. Um, so there is a, a common method of uh, of um, searching, of researching and searching, but the methodology and the, 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 the final outcome is very different. So scientists are really oriented to, to something that is working, that is pragmatically uh, functioning, uh, while artists are uh, free to explore and to come with analogies and metaphors so to evocate this kind of knowledge. So I agree uh, with you and with many that uh, sharing is the motive to set up programs like that, but the day-by-day -day activity sometimes is not so uh, fair to this uh, uh, statement. Uh, Jan, I'm going to commend something in Spanish uh, to the audience. I'm going to describe your scroll bar, and then I'm going to come back to you with, with a question related to that, to that work. Um, uno de los, de los trabajos de, de Jan Robert, por si no, no están muy familiarizados con sus, con sus piezas, Jan ha trabajado mucho en esta idea de la materialidad y de lo post digital, es decir, un poco después de haber tenido la experiencia de lo virtual, cómo trasladamos ese imaginario de lo virtual hacia el mundo físico, ¿no? esta como retraducción. Y una de las piezas que, que, que Jan Robert tiene en esa línea eh, y, que, y que expuso aquí en, en México el año pasado en Casa del Lago precisamente, es un scroll bar de madera que se exhibe en una vitrina y que otra vez nos vuelve a llevar al mundo de los objetos un elemento que en realidad no era objetual, que, que, era, que era algo que nosotros con lo que nos relacionábamos en el, en el contexto de lo virtual y que además es una herramienta para leer, para subir, para bajar dentro de una, en, en relación con una pantalla. Eh, también otra, otra, otra de sus piezas que es, es muy interesante en, ese, en este sentido es eh, Random Selection Objects y que tiene que ver con esta tarea que hacemos en la pantalla de señalar un fragmento de una imagen y, y copiar y cómo eso se puede hacer de manera aleatoria y tener como una visualidad eh, estética per se, ¿no? a partir de, de lo aleatorio y a partir de sacarlo de ese contexto de lo virtual y proyectarlo en un muro o proyectarlo en el piso. ¿no? Entonces, el, la pregunta principal del trabajo de Jan Robert es esa, es esa traducción de la materialidad a la virtualidad y viceversa. Y es interesante justo en el contexto de las, de, de las artes cómo pensar en lo tecnológico vuelto a pasar por la, por la objetualidad. Entonces, eh, lo, describía yo un poco esto, daba un poco este contexto por quienes no estén tan familiarizados con, con el trabajo de, de Jan Robert. Um, Jan, I, I briefly described uh, this, your scroll bar and random selection objects for the audience, for, for the people who, who are not uh, familiar with your work. But I would like you to comment uh, a little bit on that. Uh, you have been working with this idea of translating materiality and translating virtuality into materiality, like uh, trying to make it uh, enter in the physical, in the objectual space. And I would like you to, to comment on that. Uh, how did you start working on these kind of pieces? Because in the end, this has a very technolo technological concern, philosophical concern. 
And also, it is very, very related to a tradition, to a long tradition of material work, of understanding art as material, but also with this concern, with this philosophical concern about virtuality. So, uh, would you uh, comment on that? Yeah, I can. Um, that, that does nearly even bring us to the beginning when you were talking about a certain position in art history about. about uh, this kind of work. Uh, so my work is very inf heavily influenced by the internet itself, um, although the works you mentioned are not per se net-based materials. I mean, they're interface-based materials. One is from Photoshop, one is from the general operating system graphic interface. Um, but like with the scroll bar series, um, the fact that they are in constant flux and we're talking about like a design layer. So it's, it's of course like all these companies which are all connected and are all adding their uh, their software and updating their software online. Um, you, you have this transformative uh, ecosystem of, of information basically. But not only the information, but the software itself. And that, that, that can mean it's like the, the, the black box side of the software, but also the interface side of the software. It's like this bubbling field of uh, of evolution and um, so that's a lot of a lot of that is is quite important in my work so to actually pinpoint the material is very difficult uh, so I often see like the material metaphor uh, of the like the online materiality or the digital materiality I work with often of course naturally people say well it isn't material it's just it's just the design of, of of pixels and, and bits on your screen, uh, um, but the whole point is that this sort of this fluctuating, evolving materiality, which is gaining complexity and is completely embedded in your life and even in your tactile and physical life, uh, and influencing you heavily, uh, is, is certainly is gaining a place. But it's also for me, it's becoming like metaphorically sort of how to interpret actual material. That would even bring you back to to CERN. Sort of, how, how is how would you theoretically or even ontologically deal with um, our root material, which is wood, and stone, and atoms, and uh, um, the stuff you experience? Um, so that that even was like a, a a premise to start working because I I. I left in the as, as I started in the field of sculpture, mm -hmm. uh, and embedded continued online. Discovered that this would work really well to express this um, um, uh, these material ambiguous questions I already had with, with general materiality, um, and I found them more and more interesting with online work. I see we've lost a speaker. Um, we ask you to participate in this table, um, which title is, uh, you know, about uh, utopic and dystopic fields. And uh, in, in the sense of the last question uh, Maria Andrea uh, asked to you about uh, this um, relationship in your work between materiality and virtuality, I just start asking myself, uh, if this crisis, one of the crises of the of the 20th century and the beginning of uh, 21st century, is precisely uh, the non-difference or, or the uh, super um, blurred difference between yes. that we used to understand as materiality and that what we used to understand as, as virtuality. No, maybe uh, in this moment we we can think as a common field again in, in, in the word or in the term uh, potency. This is, this is how you say it? Mm -hmm. the, the potency mm -hmm. in, 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 in both materialities and in both virtualities, I mean the virtuality of the materiality and the materiality in the virtuality. Uh, but how do you feel about this? Is this one of the of the crisis that is, you know, uh, going beyond of what what we used to understand about this this topic, or or we are just discussing this right now. 
Uh, I don't know. Um, no, I, that's a that's a very good point. I I, um, I recently also discussed it on another talk, and I'm because uh, there was also questions about the different choices in um, representation I choose for these series of works. So you you'll have the online pieces, you'll have the projected pieces, you'll have the the printed pieces. Uh, you have all the different forms and, and emanations of the work. Um, uh, and and it's, it is that confusion and ambiguity yeah. um, uh, which I find very, very actual and, com uh, well, in my opinion, very reflecting my own confusion with, uh, with questions about reality in this point. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we, we hear the buzzword post-truth going around a lot lately, uh, especially in, in, in race to politics and politician, political situations right now, dealing uh, with, with facts and, and reality. Um, and in a way, this is, it is a very confusing time we live in, uh, in, in that base, um, sort of where the, where the power lies in, in the actual stating the facts. Um, and, and for me, this, this, this fluidness, this, this sort of, what is it, sort of networked expression of, of what the material is, uh, is for me a very natural one, and I think it's uh, it's a it's a way to sort of deal with this complexity nowadays. Yeah, precisely. Uh, another of the participants, uh, I don't I don't remember who. Um, I think was uh, Jose Luis Diaz, uh, neuroscientist. He was talking about structures, uh, and you can have uh, these sharing fields and these common fields, but also uh, uh, the science point of view, and uh, you know, adding the, the work you you do, the the, techno the technological point of view, can uh, go further in some of these questions uh, sometimes art or field uh, art field can 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 make and in this sense um, another participant mario de vega was talking about uh, the necessity uh, either if you are using this new technology or old te technology or combined technologies what is the meaning of uh, right now producing uh, knowledge uh, in order to search for these structures also, in order to understand how these metaphors and these uh, kind of uh, dreaming uh, ideals of abstract uh, works can uh, compaginate or can, can, can make um, a, you know, a parallel discussion with the reality and the, and the, and the cruel reality also and the, the real reality. Uh, the, this potency also of uh, art and the combination of uh, working with technology and working with science to make these questions more powerful and more deep um, uh, is one of the of the main subjects uh, that has been uh, bringing on in this on these panels today. What do you think about that, uh, Monica and Jan? What is the what is the um, possibilities uh, in doing this kind of combinations between science, technology, and art of asking more deep questions? Is there? <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think. Um, I think there is a there is a need, and uh, I think there is a demand from from many different positions to. To, to to look at the reality in a much more complex complex and uh, engaged uh, uh, position. It's very political. Everything is uh, is even urgent. To and uh, I think uh, artists, technologists, and scientists are ready to take the challenge. And, um, and when uh, we talk about dialogue between different disciplines, as I said before, I think it's because of that reason, because there is urgent questions that uh, affect to all of us. And, uh, and through the media and the technology we have now, we are better informed. Yeah, and uh, and we can explore different languages and discourses to do so. So, yes. Um, I am slightly skeptical, probably becoming more skeptical, especially uh, seeing the political 
um, situations in the contemporary uh, societies um, where, of course, uh, what we hope the internet would become is, is a slightly turn against us and, and we're seeing a lot of uh, misinformation gaining, uh, gaining strength and uh, actually sort of, yeah, the sort of the sharing, sharing knowledge has is, is become a very difficult thing to do uh, on the internet. So um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if, if technology um, has a sort of uh, uh, an extra position in this, or either of it, if it could help or not. Uh, I must say in the history of media art, often um, I wasn't that convinced that technology did sort of communicate that much better. But uh, it, it's it's just a it's it's just different stuff to work with as an artist. I think uh, an artist is um, or a human being is is very well uh, able to express themselves uh, 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 and through any means possible. Uh, what technology does is, of course, offer you uh, just extra tools. And um, I'm always very I'm, I'm very, I find it very interesting as sort of uh, at least. Uh, you can use like the you can you have like software which can you can mine stuff you can sort of interconnect with different systems you have an autonomous system working instead of you as an artist uh, having to steer everything so there's there's a lot of possibilities open but I would say from a moral point of view I'm not that convinced per se that it um, that it can have a better status uh, we still have to see but Currently, it's quite scary what's going on, I would say. Uh, we're going to ask the, the audience if they have any question or comment, and then we're going to get back to you. Eh, quisiéramos saber si, si ustedes justo quieren ya sumarse a, a, la, a la conversación, si quieren hacer alguna pregunta o algún comentario, ya sea en inglés o, o en español, para um, sumar a la, a la reflexión de la mesa. Sí. Hola, a lo largo de las tres mesas y con lo que están comentando ellos dos ahora, es inminente la convivencia entre arte y ciencia en múltiples niveles. Eh, ¿Cómo podríamos imaginarnos, que sería como mi punto de reflexión, que pudiera suceder esta convivencia a partir de este encuentro aquí, es decir, en la relación Centro Nacional de las Artes y Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México? Tal vez ellos tengan otra perspectiva también de cómo se lo podrían imaginar. Gracias. Eh, we have a, a question. Uh, maybe we can. Tal vez podemos primero pasar a que ellos respondan y después tal vez entre nosotros comentamos la segunda parte. <laughs> eh, eh, the question is how this this these two days of, ref, of of reflecting on art and science and its combination. These eh, two days that we have co-organized UNAM and CENART. Eh, have been offering different perspectives, some people from science, some people from arts, some, some people from institutions, about how uh, nowadays, uh, how can we combine art and science? How can we combine it from the point of view of scientists, from the point of view of, of artists, from the point of view of generating initiatives, institutional or otherwise? So we would like you to share your experience. Uh, you, uh, Jan Robert, in Amsterdam and, and in, other, uh, in other countries, what is the, the scene of this uh, combination, art and science? I mean, what is the scene institutional? Uh, what are the spaces for working these kind of projects? What is your opinion on, on, on that? And Monica, uh, in, in your opinion, in, in the work you do in, in CERN, how, how is this a, a institutional a situation for having these kind of projects, these kind of initiatives that combine art and science? I don't know who, which of you would like to, to start. <laughs> well, if, if, if you wish, I, I can start. Um, uh, okay, I, um, well, I think, and uh, 
I think the first, uh, of the, perhaps this continues my dialogue of how uh, our moral and political uh, context is important. I, I think the first thing we need to realize is that our art and science are different activities. Um, if that is so, the institutions are different as well. So, um, first of all, I, and this is something I observe here since uh, I arrived, is that um, the scientific system, the, the method for sharing and for cooperation is it's really, it's really well put, and uh, the, as well as the infrastructure, of course. But uh, uh, here there is uh, an atmosphere for sharing, uh, because unless, uh, if you don't do that as a scientist, that you cannot pursue your research, and uh, and this is something artists uh, don't, don't do. We don't, we don't do in our cultural sector uh, because it's not so required. Um, so, uh, from this point of view, uh, when we come uh, from the uh, outside, from the art into the science, which is my position here, we need to build an um, uh, atmosphere of trust and uh, explain our activity and explain the significance of our activity for society and uh, for us and uh, for the scientists. So explaining and talking and building trust and raising awareness about what we do is very important. And, and then in parallel and complementary is very important to understand the, the research done to understand, uh, I, we encourage uh, with our program uh, uh, the artists to, to 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 be well informed and to work uh, with the significance of the research. So don't jump too quickly into analogies that sometimes bring either illustration of science and uh, and uh, quick responses to scientific research that uh, some um, um, might not be relevant to, to, to the context. And then um, after, after the, the trust and the significance of our activities is, is built, is put on, the, is placed uh, well in the picture, everything is uh, ready for a, a very enriching experience and dialogue between art and science. Uh, let's see if I can add anything. Uh, from uh, I know from my experience in in the Netherlands that there's 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 quite a lot of uh, support, although it's it seems quite marginal. If you just uh, you have to be interested in it to find it, but I I think all the major scientific institutions have like an an entry point for artists to work, like the ESTEC. Uh, uh, um, space uh, research uh, lab and we have like uh, the, the radio telescopes have a, a, a sort of an artist in, in, in research project um, to just name a few so there's, there's a lot happening in that field I know from the, the academies there's at the Royal Academy of Art the Hague there's an art science faculty which is sort of research in that field uh, so it's a permanent program um, what I did what I do find uh, that's that's something sort of I don't know. It's probably a historical thing. Or you should, could be different per per nation. But I've noticed in Holland that um, often the fine art has a more embedding within humanities uh, and less in the in the sort of the beta sciences. Um, and and that and that seems like a sort of traditionally grown thing, which which is a shame. It would be interesting to see more uh, more handshakes with. Uh, with the sort of uh, the beta sciences, because um, um, yeah, I agree. There's there's so much so much to do to to communicate uh, and to sort of gain trust. I mean, where is the the big elephant in the room in in the United States is is still shocking me every day that that uh, the majority of voters um, have sort of in a way voted against scientific facts. Uh, and uh, we're quite surprised that it uh, that that could be true. Um, 
that are sort of you an expected emancipation of, of, of science uh, is not something to take to, to be taken granted. I don't know if the role is there for art per se, but if, if uh, I think it is something definitely to look into um, to sort of uh, help the communication there. Um, but that, that said, I think there is um, an emphasis on a sort of humanities uh, link with, with fine arts. And it would be interesting sort of uh, broaden it up to, uh, to, as I said, the beta field. Eh, Antonio, si te parece bien, ahorita, ahorita después de cerrar la mesa, regresamos a esa parte de, de tu pregunta, la parte como más institucional. Eh, ¿Alguna otra pregunta o, o comentario para Mónica o para Jan Robert? Eh, so, eh, Mónica, Jan Robert, ¿no? Uh, thank you very much for joining us. It was really interesting. We, re, we, we deeply appreciate that you could make it. And uh, thank you again. It's very important what you have mentioned. It's very important for, for our reflections today to have your point of view as an artist, uh, Jan, and your point of view as a curator, Monica. So uh, thank you. Thank you again. And see you soon. Thank you for the invitation. Very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Vamos a tener ahora un receso para ir a comer. Pero sí. <risa> ah, sí, teníamos una pregunta. Perdón, ya me estaba... Perdón, sí. Este, ya, ahora sí, es que como que era un poco sí, pensé que ya... fuera de, 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 esa, de esa conversación. Eh, bueno, tal vez Adriana ahora quiera agregar algo este, a, lo que, a lo que digamos aquí, Antonio. Un poco la, la razón por la que estamos aquí es una eh, muy loable iniciativa entre la Secretaría de Cultura y la UNAM de trabajar en conjunto una agenda relacionada con arte y ciencia. Justamente considerando que, que, que la Secretaría de Cultura ya tiene su propio, pues varios espacios como el Laboratorio de Arte Alameda, como propiamente el CENART, en donde se trabaja desde estos cruces. Y por otro lado, la UNAM también en distintos institutos, en distintas facultades, con distintos museos también que han, que han estado trabajando en relación con temas de, de arte y ciencia. Entonces, un poco la idea fue eh, un acercamiento entre, entre ambas instituciones para generar justamente sinergia interinstitucional y ver de qué manera podía plantearse un programa conjunto que involucrara un programa artístico, un programa académico e incluso difusión a la investigación en arte y ciencia y también este, difusión a la producción de, 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 de obras en, en, en arte y ciencia. ¿no? Ahora, estas jornada, jornadas en las, que, en las que estamos hoy son un primer producto de esta relación interinstitucional porque cuando entramos en contacto y empezamos a dialogar en distintas reuniones con algunos de los agentes involucrados, nos dimos cuenta de que había que reflexionar primero en relación con cuáles son los límites entre arte y ciencia, a qué íbamos a llamarle arte y ciencia, porque pues en una de esas todo puede caber ¿no? si, si ensanchamos mucho el, el criterio. Y queríamos también que estas jornadas fueran un termómetro de las inquietudes que tanto artistas como científicos, como gestores culturales, representantes de instituciones tenían o tenemos en relación con el tema, como para recogerlas y nutrir un poco estas reflexiones. ¿no? Es un proyecto grande que está apenas en en consolidación y que, y que digamos va en su en su etapa muy muy inicial pero estas primeras jornadas son son justamente uno de los de los primeros frutos de esta este colaboración entre secretaría de cultura y unam para abordar este tema adriana creo que, creo que esta conversación ya estaba echada a andar desde hace tiempo sí. eh, y aquí hay muchos ejemplos y también muchos deseos de que, de que esto ocurriera de manera más formal, creo. ¿no? Creo que es lo único que está pasando, que nos echaron a andar la conversación en serio y que nos toca pues sostenerla, sostenerla y, y abrir la puerta de la casa, de las dos casas, para poder transitar en cada una de ellas. Creo que estas jornadas las platicamos hace cuatro años casi. Este, Gaby está en nucleares, sale de la puente, está en todos lados. <risa> no, bueno, un, un factor importante para que esto pasara. Esto lo platicamos hace cuatro años, nos tardamos cuatro años en que pasara y creo que es solo la provocación de formalizarlo. Eh, 
hay una parte muy importante de que esto está ocurriendo hoy y es el entusiasmo de ustedes y de todos los demás que estarán con nosotros en las mesas, que nos habla de este deseo, de, de estas ganas de que pase y creo que nos comprometemos fuertemente a no soltar el tema y a que pase lo que tenga que pasar de manera un poco más ordenada. No es fácil, no sabemos qué va a ocurrir, pero lo que ocurra lo haremos, trataremos de que ocurra de manera óptima y formal y nos deje un aprendizaje y una reflexión siempre. Tampoco es fácil que dos instituciones tan grandes echen a andar un algo, menos ahora mismo con los presupuestos como los que tenemos, etc. Lo primero es esto, ¿no? es, son estas jornadas como el principio de la conversación, vamos a cruzar agendas de proyectos del próximo año para potenciarlos, para abrir caminos, para abrir otras puertas. Eh, tuvimos ya la visita a materiales, estaremos abriendo la casa para que nuestros amigos científicos sepan dónde estamos y qué hacemos. Y, y que este diálogo continúe. Después propiciar eh, investigaciones más profundas, conversaciones continuas, no sé, apoyos comunes, clases, no sé, no sé lo que lo que pueda haber porque no conocemos ese lado de la agenda, ellos sí conocen la nuestra, pero creo que de principio, si el próximo año tenemos una serie de exposiciones, coloquios, clases comunes, es un muy gran paso. Y lo que venga después depende de todos nosotros. Ale. Sí, hola, yo te quería decir con el micrófono para que se grabe, ¿verdad? Bueno, porque es así como raro. Que, que, bueno, todo esto, un poco, digo, están las instituciones, están, ¿no? Están que, que, que a fin de cuentas las, institu las instituciones están formadas de personas y personas que están trabajando ahí porque, porque quieren de alguna manera y que están comprometidos con el proyecto. A mí me tocó conocer la parte del Instituto de Ciencias Nucleares y el Instituto de Astronomía con los que he colaborado y por otro lado como artista, pues, Adriana, laboratorio y demás. Y ha sido provocar que se junten porque nosotros queremos que sucedan cosas. Ahora, ¿qué me gustaría a mí si todos estos planes que ya se van a empezar a cruzar? Pero yo creo que si nosotros como artistas pedimos o hacemos que se lleve a cabo, a mí me encantaría que hubiera en cada instituto de ciencias un artista residente. O sea, ese es, a mí es algo que me gustaría y que eso se conformara después en exposiciones, en diálogos en, y que quizá en algún instituto no es uno, son dos y que estén colaborando con los científicos. Creo que hemos abierto un poco el camino de tal forma que los científicos en los diferentes institutos ya se empiezan a ser, ser ellos los que también se acercan a nosotros. Entonces, creo que con el tiempo... Ahora, Mónica, acabo justo de regresar del CERN y algo que platicaba con Mónica es que lo que increíble es que ahora, de la primera vez que fui a esta que regresé, estoy haciendo un proyecto allá, ahora los científicos van y tocan al Departamento de Arte de ¿me puedo apuntar para hablar con un artista? O sea, ya empieza a ver eso. Y, y creo que va a depender de también que nosotros pidamos que se haga, porque sí está muy padre hacer seminarios y conversaciones y todo, pero la masa de la colaboración va a estar en que se abran esos diálogos de uno a uno o esa oportunidad de poder abrir un laboratorio o trabajar con un investigador muy, mucho más de cerca. Y que depende. Hola, este, yo soy Gabriela Frías del Instituto de Ciencias Nucleares. Como dice Adriana, este, bueno, ya le, ya hemos platicado mucho de esto por varios años. Nosotros tenemos un evento que se llama Ciencia Ficción Ciencia, que es un poco diálogos entre arte, ciencia, humanidades, etc. Y, este, y bueno, yo creo que ya han empezado a pasar muchas cosas. Ya con el Instituto de Ciencias Nucleares, pues ya se hicieron muchos este, proyectos, colaboraciones arte y ciencia. Yo creo que un poco tú y Naum, Ale, han funcionado como artistas residentes en algún sentido, porque ya han hecho muchas... Ajá, es como un fellowship permanente sin beca porque no hemos conseguido presupuesto todavía de ningún lado para, para eso. Pero bueno, yo desde el instituto y yo creo que también hablo en nombre de la UNAM, son bienvenidos este, a, a 
trabajar con nosotros cuando quieran y nosotros también los hemos buscado porque nos interesa mucho este, antes lo veíamos nada más como un vehículo de divulgación de la ciencia ahora vemos que es algo mucho más complejo que no es este, una cosa supeditada ni al arte ni a la ciencia sino una colaboración mucho más interesante entonces pues nosotros encantados de, de empezar a colaborar, de hecho los científicos del instituto ya están súper prendidos este, ya no sé cuántos han, han colaborado con ustedes pero pues ya están súper abiertos y hay gente que llega y me dice, oye, ¿cuándo vamos a seguir colaborando con los artistas? Entonces ya se ha abierto mucho también el campo por allá. Entonces, bienvenidos. Y seremos los vehículos para que eso pase. Encantados. Sí, y un poco, perdón, sobre la, sobre la mesa, sobre lo, el diálogo de Mónica y, y Robert y Jan. Que creo que dijeron cosas súper importantes como para... Y también para la mesa más teórica de mañana, como generarnos algunas preguntas. De pronto, lo que decía Jan acerca de que el arte creció como al lado de las humanidades, ¿no? Y luego vemos a las humanidades en una crisis tremenda hoy, y una crítica de la crítica que está siendo devastadora. Y por otro lado, una curadora, que me encanta la figura de Mónica Bello, porque ha sido esta curadora, como ella dice, y lo que siempre, ella se presenta como no soy una curadora teórica y yo no produzco discursos. Siempre dice eso, estoy al lado del artista motivando en el lugar donde tiene que estar Mónica Abierto Caminos, pero no, entre ellos Ale, por eso está en el CERN. O sea, no por eso llegaste antes, pero el hecho de que esté sucediendo eso en el CERN es por ella, que no crea discursos, pero, este, pero hace un trabajo, en fin, lo está creando, de un discurso este, evidentemente. Pero que también cómo responde esto a como toda la discusión teórica alrededor de la materialidad y todos estos nuevos realismos, nuevos materialismos, incluso con esta como más radical este, visión de, de, de la especulación y de, y de esta nueva como tendencia filosófica del hiperaceleracionismo y de la hiperstición y de manos a la obra, dejemos la crítica en el escritorio, como bien dijo creo que Pepe, o no sé quién dijo, la, la, no se hace en el escritorio, se hace en el trabajo. Eh, y creo que como que entre el contexto artístico y el curatorial, esta forma de curar y, los, y las instituciones eh, científicas, como que pueden darnos, o sea, creo que estamos en un momento bien importante si lo logramos así, invitar también a los filósofos, porque hay otra gran guerra entre los filósofos y los científicos, porque no, a veces no puedes mencionar, hay un científico todavía aquí, a veces mencionas a Aristóteles con los científicos y les dan alergia, pero de repente yo digo, a ver, quitemos el hilito de la filosofía a la ciencia y no hay ciencia. No hay, entonces como también ahí, claro, pero entiendes por qué, la, eso tiene que ver con la crisis de las humanidades, con que la crítica no ha podido ser crítica como para detener lo que ya está pasando hoy, este, no sé, y los artistas y los curadores han sido agentes súper importantes en este cambio. Sí, absolutamente. ¿No? Fíjate que ahorita también por lo que dices, Tania, um, se ha hablado también mucho, por supuesto, de compartir eh, no, no solo visiones, sino metodologías y modos de hacer, que es un poco también en, en este modo de compartimiento y de eh, involucramiento y de eh, contagio, quiero decir, es la palabra que está buscando, con, de contagio entre estos mundos que tienen que ver también con el cómo se hace. Y otra cosa que podría ser bien interesante es pensar a nivel, que también se ha hablado ya, eh, lenguaje. Eh, lenguaje, eh, por supuesto, ya, ya lo sabemos, eh, entre más encriptado, menos encriptado, eh, se ha hablado de la especialización versus no tanto, la transparencia, etcétera, opacidad, por supuesto, pero pensar también las propias estructuras lingüísticas como parte de un entendimiento compartido entre arte y ciencia puede ser riquísimo. Y a lo mejor en una de estas cosas que organicemos en el, bajo este programa podría ser interesante algo dedicado a eso. O sea, digamos, estructura, el lenguaje estructuralmente como una metáfora de otras estructuras compartidas podría ser muy rico, incluyendo el lenguaje, por, por supuesto, de la filosofía, que es en sí mismo una construcción eh, tan, tan eh, literaria como alguna de las cosas que dijo José Luis Díaz, ¿no? Sí, y bueno, retomando también lo que lo que decías tú, Ale, eh, en realidad pues es, es algo muy, pues que tiene muchísimas aristas, porque no solo son las aristas disciplinares, ¿no? De cómo se ve el mundo desde la trinchera del arte o desde la trinchera de la ciencia, sino al interior de eso, 
eh, digamos, el científico que está produciendo teoría, pero el científico que también está gestionando procesos científicos o procesos académicos dentro del propio ámbito científico. Por otro lado, dentro del ámbito del arte, pues los que producen obra, los que están haciendo este tipo de, de agenciamientos tan importantes como lo hace Mónica, la gente que trabaja desde la crítica, en fin, son como todos estos espacios de interacción con agentes muy diversos. Eh, y de hecho justo el, era, era este el arranque, ¿no? Un poco tener estas jornadas de reflexión, pero para que se genere esta agenda compartida, esta agenda común, que potencie precisamente todas las lo que se pueda hacer en este cruce que, que en este momento este, se ha planteado en algunos ejes, pero que obviamente va a ir derivando también de justo toda la retroalimentación de todos estos agentes, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, eh, si les parece bien, vamos a, a dar entonces por concluida esta mesa. Tendríamos un receso, la siguiente mesa daría inicio a las 4.45 de la tarde y tenemos una mesa muy interesante al, al rato en la tarde, ojalá puedan, puedan estar presentes, que también va a tocar un punto muy importante que es el de la conservación, la preservación, o sea, qué pasa justamente en el tema de arte y ciencia eh, en relación con conservación y preservación, ¿no? Este, con patrimonio, que también es un elemento muy importante, ¿no? O sea, patrimonio... Eh, este, documental, patrimonio artístico propiamente, en qué sentido se puede conservar en el, en el marco de, de manifestaciones que muchas veces son efímeras o no, en fin, ojalá puedan sumarse a, a esta reflexión y el día de mañana al foro de química en Universum, en donde continuaremos también con, con las siguientes mesas Perdón, nada más para decir quiénes participan ahorita en la mesa, conservación e historia reciente preservación e investigación del patrimonio tangible e intangible producido en los entrecruces de las artes ciencias y técnicas, Nos nos acompaña Abdel Aziz Abid, fundador del programa Memoria del Mundo de la UNESCO. Joana Morfín Guerrero, que es investigadora, restauradora eh, y ahora mismo eh, colabora con el Museo Universitario del Chopo. Claudio Hernández, restaurador del Museo Universitario Arte Contemporáneo. Y Tito Rivas, que es programador artístico de la Fonoteca Nacional, también artista sonoro e investigador. Y va a moderarlos Germán Fraustro, restaurador eh, y colabora con el INA y con el ENCRIM. Los esperamos eh, ahorita en un ratito. Gracias. Gracias.